using the normal methods of past life regression, like deep relaxation. No, no. So I'm using more yogic <laughs> things. Mm -hmm. And so people, um, most of the time in the first session, they can talk to their high self and inner child. They're conscious, they're hearing it or seeing it, they're seeing images, you know, that depends on how they operate. Some are visual, some are cognitive, you know, some are audio, you know, just feeling. Mm. It depends, yeah. That depends, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And, but, you know, I get to talk to a lot of high selves. Hmm. You know, that are enlightened, call, call it Christ conscious. You know? Some are polarized, male and female, you know, some are you know, on the transcendental level, um, you know, some are very cosmic. And, you know, sometimes you talk to uh, demigods like Anunnaki or Nagas or other powerful ETs, you know. And so they all have their perspective and their thing to say, you know, I'm looking for the stuff, the pay dirt. You know, that nobody has explored, that's outside of tradition, you know, and where you really get results. I mean, I, oh God, my life, you know, I, I listen to so many lectures, <laughs> and it's just like, a bili 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 bili. you know, spiritual kung fu or verbal kung fu. You know, I mean, I studied Western philosophy, so these are systems of you know, mental chess, so to say. As yeah. a hypnotist, you can only bring somebody to the realm where you yourself has been. So if you haven't been in the Olymp, you know, on that level of Anunnaki, you know, you can't you know, bring anybody there. You know, even if they were Anunnaki, you can't bring them there. You know, I see myself as a contractor. Okay, talk to me about that. Well, um, you know, I have a client and um, so he wants to have relief or whatever, you know, and I um, make this happen, you know. I mean, uh, I call in on his high self, find out what's going on, you know, see uh, who he offended or who his ancestors offended, <laughs> you know, and get that straightened out, <laughs> you know. And I mean, this can be big, you know, like uh, warfare, <laughs> you know, and this can mm. be small, like murder or cheating, mm. you know? but that depends. And there are curses, so, you know, and there are divine beings you know, that gladly help out, you know, so I have my crew, you know, that is reliable, you know, and so Archangel Michael, he does certain things, and Mother Mary is good for kids and love and women, you know? and so I have those beings that I have a relationship with. Greetings, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome back to season four, the Vulnerable Power Show where we take a deep dive and bring the soul and heart back to leadership. And today it's the metaphor for me is like one of those rock stars that I've always wanted to see that pulls me on stage. I have a fellow Ascension scientist, at least that's what I call him. It's going to be a real treat to dive into some soul healing, ghosts of our past, how that stuff can affect us. So without further ado, I wanted to introduce Wolfgang Tools of ascension, tools for ascension. I mean, brother, to say that it's a treat is an understatement. Thank you for being here. Well, my ego just fell in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, one of the ways I usually start is by telling the audience how I met the person that is the guest today. Um, here, it's really surreal. I When I started this show three, four years ago, it really felt like an extension of me. And here we are four seasons in, and I met Wolfgang's work about a year ago through Manya Welch, who was on the show, and then also through a healer she sent me through. And the work that I discovered him through was about fear and terror and akin to the topic that we felt inspired to talk about today, these ghosts and traumas we can carry at a soul level. And it was surreal. It, uh, was simple, the work that he's going to bring through today, you'll see as an audience. And I'm excited to play. I'm excited to really see what unfolds and uh, dive right in. And as Wolfgang likes to say, smile like an idiot together. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so where do you want to start, brother? I, I usually will ask, like, you want to go from the beginning of your journey and kind of pepper in how you got to the masterful work you're doing or what do you no, feel? No, why don't you just read my bio that I sent you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can pull that up and we can do it. The lawyer in me loves formality. So anytime we do it that way. So 
Wolfgang has a very interesting background because I don't know if he knows this because we've only had a brief chat to come on the show. He actually was born in Germany and then fell into studying philosophy, it seems like, years in India, studying yoga, mysticism. And then his skill set early on was actually in the printing industry, where I actually was one of my first jobs as a kid, <laughs> which when I saw this in your bio, um, working as a photographer, cameraman, video production, and then finding your way. I mean, I can go on and on the firewalking, sweat lodges, Sanskrit teachings, you know, advanced rebirthing, hands-on healing, breathwork techniques, Kundalini yoga. Personally, I call you an Ascension scientist or a soul engineer because of the nature of what you do, brother. And, you know, you've been on YouTube longer than I've been at this. And I really do feel that um, this is like Superman and Batman coming together in a way is what it feels like to powerhouse. So... So yeah, so that this is the man, the myth, the legend, Wolfgang. Well, I'm not a legend, you know, um, yet uh, maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, how can I serve you? Yeah, so let's start with something that I feel for the audience that are practitioners like myself. How did you stumble upon the work that you're doing? I mean, let's start there. Let's start at the proverbial beginning of the journey for you in terms of being a practitioner and becoming a practitioner. Well, um, I studied um, yoga in India, you know, bhakti yoga as such. And um, then after six years, you know, and I uh, lived very monastically. Um, you know, I slept on a straw mat, a $2 straw mat <laughs> for six years on a marble floor, right? Wow. You don't sleep longer than six hours <laughs> unless you're sick. <laughs> By design. Yeah, but it's healthy, you know, mm. and um, so cold showers only, you know, I mean, completely austere. And um, so then I, I lived in, um, in in America in a spiritual commune. And um, I was studying there also uh, bhakti yoga um, and I was mm. doing, you know, videography, etc. And then somebody came and did a past life regression on me. And it worked. So I got shown right away, you know, some of the most embarrassing things <laughs> mm. about people, you know, how it was myself. You know, one of them was I was uh, a Spartan. Mm. Um, yeah, but I was a merchant, you know, which was kind of looked down upon. And I was like a glutton, you know, like look colors, you know, just knocking the old tail. <laughs> I mean, these are guys <laughs> that, that drink blood. <laughs> And cow's milk, you know. And you were seeing and, this. So during this regression, you were seeing it, I, experiencing yeah, it again. I was experiencing it. Mm -hmm. I could let go of enough, you know, under the guidance of the person. And you know, my images weren't very clear. You know, it was not clear, but you know, I, I got it. And um, you know, the shame of it. And 350 pounds, you know. I mean, normally, this is nowadays, this is, you know, not unusual, you know, but in mm. those times, that was extreme. So, you know, that, that um, you know, I realized why I don't like to be fat. <laughs> mm. I always, you know, kept in shape my whole life. You know, mm. That came from that lifetime. You know, so it gave me a lot of compassion, you know, and understanding. Plus, as a tool um, for you know, cleansing and realizing yourself, you know, I saw it as supreme. Um, you know, um, and I just adapted those techniques. You know? And uh, later on, I will find them, you know, with breath work and, um, you know, other things. You know, I can do chi transfer. I'm an empath, so I know where other people's chakras are at and can give corrections, <laughs> you know, get them tweaked like a race car, you know, and get them souped up. And I'm not using the normal methods of past life regression, like deep relaxation, no, you know. So I'm using more yogic <laughs> things. You know? And so people, um, most of the time in the first session, they can talk to their high self and inner child you know, and do extraordinary things. Um, yeah, so, you know, I found that this is like one of the best methods, you know, for spiritual advancement. Elaborate on that. What, what do you mean? that this is the best method for spiritual because again for the audience's sake we're going to have some newbies in the audience i sense yeah, yeah, and some people uh, yeah, yeah yeah of course you know um and i mean i'm not saying this as a daily practice right 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 these are like no. i guess you could say excavations i would call them deeper dives 
Yeah, yeah, these are like vision quests, you know, you do those, you know, sometimes, you know, and to give guidance, you know, and to connect, you know, to your source, you know, find out who you really are, you know, this mm. part of becoming a, a woman or a man, I would say, unless you know this, you're just pretty much dumbling around. So, um, hmm. uh, yeah, spiritual advancement. Um, well, how is this best for spiritual advancement? Well, for instance, um, you know, in these regressions, I basically talk to the divine aspect of that person, you know, and the person is right there, you know, witnessing it. This is not transgendering where they're like, you get taken over and then they don't remember anything. They're conscious. No, no, no. They're conscious. They're hearing it or seeing it. They're seeing images, you know, that depends on how they operate. Some are visual, some are cognitive, you know, some are audio, you know, and just feeling. Mm. It depends, yeah. That depends, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And, but, you know, I get to talk to a lot of high selves, mm. you know, that are enlightened, call, call it Christ conscious, you know, some are polarized, male and female, you know, some are, you know, on the transcendental level, um, you know, some are very cosmic, and, you know, sometimes you talk to uh, demigods like Anunnaki or Nagas or other powerful ETs, you know. And so they all have their perspective and their thing to say. So, I mean, I studied Eastern scripture, of course, and now Christianity. And, um, you know, plus I studied Western philosophy. So, you know, mm. <laughs> um, I kind Bringing of... Bringing it together, you know, it's incredibly, so, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I can ask qualified questions, you know, plus I have a you know German education in physical sciences, you know, so... <laughs> You know, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I can ask qualified questions. Plus, in my Hindu teachings, you know, I was trained how to um, communicate with those beings. Mm. You, know, you don't want to offend, you know, neither a demon nor, uh, you know, a god or a demigod or a teeth. Well, I love this because we're already getting into this season. I, I sensed it was going to get into more of this advanced work, shall I say, for a lack of a better description. And, and what I like to call the hidden dimensions, you know, as we call it beyond the veil, beyond the normal senses and the material senses, because you're already dropping really amazing insights about these otherworldly beings. And when we get into this line of work, um, because for me, what, what really stood out in terms of both finding your work and how I found it on my journey in terms of healing and transformation and ascension, what have you, is how the heavy shit that we can't necessarily understand that's paranormal, shall we say, that holds us back and how the mind gets in the way. So I love that you're already saying things that for some people in the audience may be new. For some people, they'll say, oh, I've experienced something like that, maybe not to that extent. So what? let's, let's dive into one question that already pops in. What do you do with the disbelief? Like, because I've come to learn the disbelief placebo oh, effect, oh, you know, oh, it blocks I mean, it. Um, first of all, you know, to me come on mostly clients, you know, that react to my guided meditations. You know, if they don't react, they're not going to come to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus I put intent out that only people that I can help will come to me. You okay. Know, I don't want to deal with somebody that is too, you know, traumatized or not able, you know, doesn't have the basics together, you know, where I cannot help. You know, um, so you start with the intention of, as a practitioner, what you're actually broadcasting out into the field and what you want to manifest and attract. I love how you're starting there with that discernment. Yeah. yeah. You know, plus, I don't want to do like the chew, chewing the chew. You know, I mean, yeah, everybody talks about grounding and vegetarianism and this and that. You know, I mean, everybody's copying everybody. You know, um, I don't want to waste my time with this. You know, I'm looking for the stuff, the pay dirt, you know, that nobody has explored that's outside of tradition, you know, and where you really get results. I mean, I oh got my life, you know, I, I listen to so many lectures and it's just like, bleep, 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 bleep. You know, spiritual kung fu or verbal kung fu. You know, I mean, I studied Western philosophy, so these are systems of you know, mental chess, so to say. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, um, I'm very um, practical oriented. So, first of all, so people that are not suited don't come to me. Okay. You no, know, maybe only if they're referred. Then, second, um, when I introduce them, when I do the grounding with them, and when I do the chakra opening, you know, to the heavens and the heart opening. 
they feel that. You know, I mean, they feel this. I mean, I would agree. There are, there are very few people that do not feel this. And, you know, and those that don't feel this, they're very traumatized as such. You know, they have so much pain in their body, in their being, that they cannot even perceive the subtle stuff. Mm, <laughs> you know, they perceive yeah. their pain first and, yeah. you know, go back. You know? So with something like that, I would have to do rebirthing breath or just cleanse them with chi or stuff like this, you know? Okay. Um, you know, and um, yeah, then, uh, you know, those they can be straightened out too. You know, once they dump enough trauma, then they start feeling again. But most of the time I'm able to open their heart chakra and um, I can project love into their heart. You know, and they teach them how to project love into my heart. I open their crown chakra and they can feel it. Most of them, 80% feel it. You know, and it blows their mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I mean, it's a show that, hey, this is, it's at, you know, this is possible. And then I have them doing it at me too. You know, I coach them and they can do it. Mm. You know, and just, I mean, they're learning an hour, but they wouldn't have learned in a weekend, you know, intense seminar. <laughs> Yeah. And so, and, uh, you know, show them how to run love and different techniques, you know, how to run this love onto others. And um, then, you know, you also connect to source, you know, so you have access to supreme love. Mm. And consider that the VIP pass, and they feel this, you know, and they're like getting art, you know, this is like it blows their mind. I, I will yeah. concur. And, and I and I love what you're already unpacking because so one thing that I came to see early and as a practitioner is that healing can't be done to you. You have to be a participant and it has to come from within. So I love how you're saying they're conscious, they're invoking their higher self, you're having them be their own healer, which I feel like that's why, as you alluded to, some of it is intellectual masturbation. Um, I, I call it that. You called it something else more politely. Um, and, and it really, to me, yes, because when I did your meditations, I loved the fact that there's no bells and whistles. You're taking people into altered states of consciousness and into these deeper states of awareness beyond the proverbial veil. And I would concur uh, because I was already experiencing a lot of advanced work and I was like, wait, what the heck? How did he do this so quickly? You know, you 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 literally brought the field in so quickly. So that's why I started by saying the simplicity that you're bringing back, the organic nature of how you're bringing this through is remarkable in my in my opinion. Well, the thing is, you know, what you have to consider is it's not just, you know, I'm doing the text here, you know, and speaking in a dramatic voice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hmm? I'm going with my consciousness there, what I'm talking about. I'm not completely there. I mean, because I got to talk and stay online, you know. I'm not zoning out completely. That's just me on kind of low, mm. <laughs> you know, talking all the time. So you're letting your higher but, consciousness do most of the work, the super conscious, the higher self, the soul. Yeah, so to speak. you know, you get, you know, the contact high, you know, from my consciousness, you know, from my voice, you know, of course, I check in the music, you know, I mix this with specific purpose in mind. You know, and it's designed, you know, there are bells in there, by the way, this ping, you know, there is a bell in there, you know, which is very purifying, you know, so, um, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, um, uh, once a, a hypnotist told a friend of mine, you know, we, we started, you know, hypnotizing each other, that you can only, as a hypnotist, bring somebody, you know, where you already have been, where your consciousness has been. Say that one more time, that you can only as, go... As yeah. a hypnotist, you can only bring somebody to the realm where you yourself has been. So if you haven't been in the Olymp, you know, on that level of Anunnaki, you know, you can't you know, bring anybody there. You know, even if they were Anunnaki, you can't bring them there. So that's maybe what they mean by heal or heal thyself, right? Because you have to be able to actually access that dimensionality within, from what I'm hearing you say. To then be able to take another as a guide or a vessel, let's say, to that dimensionality. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like say you're a mountain guy, you know, and you're out of shape. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. 
It's a good analogy. You know, yeah. yeah an out of shape came, guy can't go up the mountain. In, you know, that's why I'm laughing. I had yeah. never heard that one. <laughs> good example. I love that what you brought through. Yeah. Because you can't climb Mount Everest if you're out of shape and your cardio sucks. So, yeah, it's a very yeah, but quick imagine and easy you're analogy a professional for. show about it is out of shape. <laughs> you know, I love that you idea. brought that word through, Sherpa. I mean, in a lot of ways, that's what you're doing, right? I mean, let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. My understanding of a shaman or a mystic is a sh is like a, a vessel, a sherpa, right? I mean, how do you how do you no, view no, that? No no no, 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 no. I see myself as a contractor. Okay, talk to me about that. Well, um, you know, I have a client, and um, so he wants to have relief or whatever, you know, and I um, make this happen, you know. I mean, uh, I call in on his high self, find out what's going on. You don't see uh, who he offended or who his ancestors offended, <laughs> you know, and get that straightened out, <laughs> you know. And I mean, this can be big, you know, like uh, warfare, <laughs> you know, and this can mm. be small, like murder or cheating. Mm. 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 That that depends, and there are curses. So you know, um, there are divine beings you know, that gladly help out, you know. So I have my crew. You know, that is reliable, you know, and so Archangel Michael, he does certain things, and Mother Mary is good for kids and love and women, you know? and so I have those beings that I have a relationship with. And, you have them on retainer? Uh, <laughs> you have your subcontractors on retainer? <laughs> I think, let me put it like this. They're glad that there is somebody that calls on them and gives them permission to help out. Ooh, let's unpack that because I had a teacher say something similar. So I love the contractor analogy you're bringing through. It, it, I, a teacher of mine once said that it, free will is what you have to exercise because these divine energies, these celestial beings, let's call them, can't come until you ask them. And so is that what you mean by they're eager to help because somebody's calling upon them? Is that my paraphrase resonate mm -hmm. in that way? Well, they're staying in line to help out. What do you mean mm -hmm. by that? I, I let's I mean, let's flesh that out. The situation yeah. on this planet is rather dire. You know, I mean, <laughs> I hope you can see this. You know, um, the way things are going. Unpack yeah. that because you're you're reading my my flow of where I was going to go next. So this is beautiful. What what do you mean? I mean, yeah, I know it's it's chaotic and it's proverbial. Mm -hmm. You know, hell on mm -hmm. earth, and there's a lot of and trauma. So, and, you know, it's basically a frequency war as such. A you know, frequency of, war. I like know, it. Of light, light against dark. You know, mm. and fear. You know, against love. You know, this mm. is a time where um, you know the light and cosmic forces. You know, higher vibration is coming in. You know, electronic electron cloud. You could say, mm -hmm. and um, so and the dark forces don't like that. You know, and they try. Mm. You know, to keep things contaminated as much as they can, you know, through war, through electronics, you know, chemical contamination, mm. you, know, um, you know, on all kinds of levels and technologies that you probably, most people have barely any idea, of, you know, what exists. Mm. But that's the big picture, you know. So um, you know, um, those beings, those divine beings, they can look through space and time, you know, but they do not interfere. You know, unless they are, you know, asked, you know, but when they are asked, oh, they're glad you help. You know, you are like, um, like in the army, you know, um, you know, there's an officer that looks where the bombs hit or where the, you know, artillery hits and they call in artillery, you know, and they're very important, you know, adjust here, you know, we need some over here, you know, mm. and so that's us, you know, our slight workers. You know, calling in the strikes. You know, oh, there is something going on now. Oh, yeah, big violation of the rule. Yeah, you know, arrest all the beings that are doing this. You know, we give permission, bring them to the courts of divine justice, you know, for, for the highest good. And, um, and then the victims, you know, bring them to places where they can be you know, healed and liberated. You know, I call this ascension temples. And it works. You know, and you can feel the energy leaving, and and then you know, the, generally the trauma has to be cleared. You know, there's thought forms. Mm. If it, there was a battle or murder, you know, you generally have dark portals there. <laughs> you know, creepy energy that has to be cleared. You know, things like that. So, you know? what do you mean? What do you understand the word ascension to mean? Right, the tools for ascension, ascension. I'm using mm -hmm. ascension scientists. What What do you understand mm -hmm. that to mean in terms of this frequency war? Let's say. 
Yeah, okay. So um, the analogy of a hot air balloon is really good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, your chi is like hot air. You know, you're loving chi. You know, and it will tend to rise up. Your kundalini going up. You know, the more your energy goes up into the head and above, you know, the more saintly you become. Okay. You know, we're high and more enlightened. Okay. Because your antenna is open to the higher realms. You know, you're not just a dumb materialist that's looking at matter. You know, who gets the fattest messages. Okay. Not interested in that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, now the baggage, you know, that's the problem. You know, um, that is like your emotional baggage, you know, from this lifetime, you know, anything, self-esteem, trauma, <laughs> you know, and all these, you know, they hold you down. Mm -hmm. and then past life baggage, you know, spells, curses, you know, depression. I mean, you know, life is rough, you know, and then um, most of this stuff comes from ghosts, you know, so not mm -hmm. um, all the consciousness when it's too traumatized, you know, um, doesn't um, have that vibration, hot air balloon again, and they get stuck in the lower astral. Mm -hmm. You know, see the higher vibration, finer is higher, you know, refined air, you know, and so they get stuck in the lower astral. Guilt, anger, fear, magic, curses, like spells. Denser power. vibrations is what you mean. Yeah, but there's, there's no, well, these are the reasons why people stay back, why ghosts stay back. You know, mm -hmm. if they get killed, they want revenge, you know, and they take revenge, you know, from this astral plane. Mm -hmm. When they're attached to a woman, you know, or a man, you know, they follow them around, you know, many times, like stalkers, you know, and then they don't like the new lover and all this, you know, they mess up, they get jealous, or they want to get even if they got dumped. So, you know, you got the human drama going on, but people don't even know. And it's like that these energies are interplaying with our realm of let's call the physical reality so i like yes. this because as an engineer it sounds like i mean everything you've said in the last few moments i love the hot air analogy it sounds like you know ghosts demons the frequencies of these things the dark let's call them the darker negative or lower vibrational it sounds like it's and i would call it energy spillage is how it comes into my mind almost right because yeah, energy is neither created nor destroyed and it's almost like i like contractors so it's a lot of it is cleaning up this stuff it seems like this, this let's say the sewage that's spilled in the foundation of of the yeah. building that is me for instance is that is that a good analogy to kind of go off of Yes, yes. You know, actually, yeah, I call the grounding cords are sewage cords. You know, this is the function. You know, you have to be grounded to the earth mother, you know, um, to dump your dark emotions out. You know, I mean, in all Slow times, down on that. Slow down on that, yeah, brother, because uh, so what do you mean uh, by uh, that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, most of when you look at humanity, <laughs> you know, most of the time they did a lot of walking, right? And mm -hmm. Barefoot or sandals. So they got a foot massage all the time. And that chi body was connected, you know, to the earth. Knipe, you know, um, you know, walking in the morning do, you know. Mm -hmm. You get that chi up, you know. And there are people that are into grounding. And um, you should have the same voltage as the earth, you know. But I think there's a four volt difference. Yeah, know? that sounds about right. You, you know, which, you know, messes up your physical body. You know, just like plastic clothing too, you know. So, um you know, you have to counteract this as a yogi, you know, so you got to, as a yogi, you were like, this is not good enough, you know, I mean, yeah, if you walk every day in nature, <laughs> it might be good, you know, if you walk in the garden, you know, grounding comes naturally, but normally, no, I sit for eight hours on the computer, you know, mm. so I got to like physically ground, you know, mm. do breathing, and it works, you know, and plus as a yogi, you, you overcharge, you supercharge, so you, you know, your brain doesn't, you know, work on 15%. No, mm. no, 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 no. You're activating no. these extrasensory, let's say, p pathways and potentialities yeah. and capacities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cheer it up, you know, electromagnetic force, and you uh, balance left and right brain. <laughs> You know, you use a lot of breath, so you have also lots of oxygen, but you use chi. You know, this is the subtle life force, you know, electromagnetic life force. All gone, you know, free, uh, real chi, ki. Prana for the Vedic. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting because you said something that I feel like for me was shocking when I learned it. And I learned it through the shamanic school, which is you said that the grounding cords, the our connections to the earth plane is actually how we're supposed to release the heavy energy. And that to me was shocking because you hear all of this heal the earth, heal the earth. So it seemed contradictory. Why would I give my garbage to the earth? And then I learned, well, mm -hmm. the earth actually eats heavy energy. Is that your understanding of how it works or how do you relate to that in terms well, of then the sewage she can, pipes? She can transmute your energy, you know, and it's not um, like, you know, you're using earth as the painting of Dorian Gray, you know, they just commit dark deeds, you know, and just keep dumping on the earth. Like dumping, you know? dumping. <laughs> <laughs> Bad karma transfer, it's called. You know? So I take all my uh, garbage, Earth. <laughs> yeah, you know she, um, you know she's not stupid. You know she can just cut you off. You know, <laughs> you know look at a lot of magicians. You know they don't look happy and healthy. <laughs> yeah, the so, selfishness, you know, lopsidedness. Yeah, see by the result. <laughs> Yeah, well, so you're saying that then it ha it seems like what you're saying is that there's an intention behind it, and it's more of a recycling intentionality. Well, first of all, you know, um, from a practical point of view, you're more valuable to Mother Earth when you're emotionally balanced instead of being completely off and stuck up, you know? Mm. Yeah, you know? so, I mean, she loves you unconditionally, you know, more than any mother, and she's smart, so she knows who for all your incarnations. So you have a huge resource, you know, of love from the earth mother. You know, you got to smile and breathe. I'm, I'm demonstrating this to you right now. Smile so you can feel it. So I'm pulling it up from her and then I'm projecting it towards you. That's like 20 seconds, you know, well, cold. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no? And the Imagine key, as you it. taught me, is to smile because that's also something simple that you were talking about versus the frown. Mm -hmm. it's, it's remarkable. It's opening that gateway and the pathways and allowing, as you said, to pull it up and out and, and fuel and then use. Yeah, I definitely always look at, you know, simplicity and, you know, effectiveness. So what I found out, in mm. my studies, um, that um, when you smile, you tune into your higher mind, your mm. divine mind. You know, your mind becomes like a, a butterfly, you know, going for the beauty, nectar, joy, happiness, love, you know, frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more you frown, the more you tune into your lower mind. Pessimism, you know, um, yeah, you know, um, anger, jealousy. <laughs> You know, everything pisses you off. Nothing is good enough. You mm. know, your mind becomes like a fly, you know, going for the garbage. Mm. You know? um, in the same reality, it's the same reality. You know? So um, that's your choice. You know, simplest choice, upper mind, lower mind. You know, mm. Even if you don't feel like it. You know? And if you're frowning and I yell at you, it's going to hurt you. Mm. You know, and because it's lower vibration, you know, it gets right in there. When you smile and laugh ha, 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 and I yell at you, um, you know, it's not going to get at you. You know, maybe at the end I give a demonstration on this. You yeah. Know, for, the view, for the viewers to see, yeah. they can see for themselves. We can play this, with it. Yeah. So yeah. I love this so far. So we have a hot air balloon analogy for what you would say is a description or an analogy of ascension, right? So we want to kind of fill up and go higher, raise our vibration. And that requires us to get rid of these, let's say, densities, these baggages, these old things, which, as you have alluded to astutely, past life, other dimensions, as well as this time and space continuum. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, we're touching on the garbage, you know, how our grounding, our root chakra, the feet, the soul chakras connecting to the earth grids, how that operates, the smiling. I love that. And then something that you, you said that I forgot to highlight at the very beginning, which is the impact. Because what good is, is all of this inner work and all of this fancy, which I saw in the spiritual community. And maybe that's why I gravitated towards, you know, liking what you did and reaching out for you to come on the show, because... 
Yeah, it, it's. I say this all the time in my own practice. I don't care if any of this is real. If you believe it's real and it impacts you and you get that result and you said, I whoa, believe efficacy. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so, no, no. Okay, let's those, slow it down. Those, let's unpack yeah, no, that. Those, okay. those, those, those people, they feel this. You know? I okay. mean, you feel, they feel the love. I mean, they feel the love, you know, and many cry out of love. You know? mm. So when I have them in, in the first session, mostly run love on the inner child, any of them cry, 50 to 30% cry, you know, mm. out of love, not out of pain, you know, mm. out of love, you know, so, oh, no, 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 and when their crown chakra gets open, they feel definitely lighter, I mean, they all feel lighter after the session, you know, there may be the healing crisis afterwards, it's like fasting, you know, integrating, you know, you go high like anything, and then everything starts detoxing, you have to cry, you know, as above, so below, and then, you know, you go maybe through a little healing crisis, you know, but um, otherwise, you know, you feel lighter, better, and your heart opens. I mean, you have access to love. And, you know, and after a couple of past life regressions, I mean, yeah, you know, you are not this body, you are an eternal being, and that's a lot of pressure off you, <laughs> you know. Mm. I mean, if you really believe you are the one-shot deal here, and after death, that's it. You know, you got a huge bucket list, you know, <laughs> you better use your time wisely, you know, but if you see yourself surrounded by eternity, you know, you to relax a little bit more, you know. I love that. So, yeah, so the impact is visceral is, is how I would interpret what you're saying. Like they, they can feel it and I agree. And it, that's oh, how, yeah. that's what you mean by the impact and the oh, yeah. visceralness oh, yeah. of it, the embodiment of it. It's cellular. I mean, they're really letting go of this at oh, a base yeah. quantum level. And, and I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just the previous session today, you know, the lady went into tetany you know, and uh, there was a you know, dark energy into, in her. Mm. You know, and, and, and we cleared that, you know, and it was normal again, you know. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, this happens all the time. This kind of stuff, you know, that you clear. Unpack the detoxing, because I, I love that you're touching all the points that I usually have to explain to clients, because I saw this in psychology, I believe, with drugs or any operant stimulus that we take in. I think they call it the seagull curve. You know, you go and you said as is up, so is below. You, you know, you have the high of it, and then you go dip down as far as engineering goes before the wave starts to balance out. So, like, how do you explain that to people? Look, this is going to get, you're going to detox. Shit's going to come out. Garbage in, garbage out, as I say. Like, how do, how do you, you said healing crisis. Let's play with that a bit. What do you, how do you relate to that detox integration process after the release? Well, it's very simple. You know? um, so when your vibration is suddenly very high, you know, then the physical body has to follow. You know, and so it's becoming more refined. You know, so it's dumping the darker stuff. I mean, you know, it's your your subtle body, you know, is the template for your physical body. Mm. You know, if you have emotional, you know, stuff around your sexuality stuck, you know, um, the chances are that those areas start looking pretty nasty. You know? Mm. You know, all kinds of fat growing there, you know, toxic looking, not healthy looking. Mm. You know, the, the purer um, the emotional body is, you know, in the etheric body is, you know, you can both see this in the skin, you know, in, in the aura too, you know, but in everything, you know, it, it shows there. You know, if somebody, you know, looks like, you know, he just last night, you know, drank a bottle of vodka, mm. and he's telling you he's a great yogi, you know, no, probably not, you know. <laughs> and if somebody, you know, is like telling you how to be happy in life, you know, and he looks like he just went through a divorce, yeah, dude, you know, heal yourself first, you know, before chewing, you know, and trying to be, you know. I saw a, uh, a funny cartoon that said, uh, healing workshop canceled, healer is sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it was energy healing workshop canceled, <laughs> energy healer is sick. So, yeah, it makes sense to me. I mean, because like you're speaking mm -hmm. the lingo. So for the audience to kind of put it into this phraseology of so you're saying that the energetic body once you, what the work you're doing it clears that so then the cellular body our biophysical our meat suit then releases so that's what you meant by this detoxification healing crisis yeah, so, you know, so you know you got to drink more water and you make sure you have roughage in your diet 
you know, because you start, you know, the toxins go into the, the lymph system, the lymph system goes into the colon, you know, so you want to have a lot of straw there, you know, to dilute it, otherwise you auto-intoxicate, you know, and you get a headache, you know, you get skin rashes, <laughs> stuff, mm. you know, your skin starts getting itchy, you know, and you feel tired from the toxins, so you want to flush those toxins out. How do you during that, let's say, healing crisis or post session integration period do what is your what do you say as far as meat or let's call it the death frequency? Do you recommend the clients eat meat during that detox period? I know it depends, generally speaking. Well, um, you know, it's best not to do drastic changes in your diet. First OK, all. OK. You know, I mean, you know, if you just, you know, um eat like, you know, 50% of your calories are for meat, and you're suddenly going vegetarian, you know, that shift change is going to create a lot of problems in your factory. Okay. Interesting. You know? So don't shift Prepare it too for much. A lot of, yeah, I mean, you know, see it as a factory, you know, you got to have a nice flow, and if you change too much at a time, you know, you're going to have... Yeah, you know, flow problems. <laughs> well, it may actually strain the biology is actually now that you say that is, I would say, is what comes to mind. It's like a shift, you know, your yeah. body works in shifts, day shift, night shift. <laughs> mm, <laughs> cycles. You have you have teams, you know, and so on, you know, liver and so on, you know, there you have your different teams. So, and, um, you know, um, so a plus also, you know, um, then you have to think about, you know, maybe you realized that in a past lifetime, you know, your lover or your mother, you know, did this and that to you. you know? okay. And then you also find out that, oh, in another lifetime, you did this and this to her. You know? And then you like go through your memories in this lifetime. Oh, God, this is where this is coming from. <laughs> you know? mm. And this is why, oh, this was that ghost, you know, that made her do this. You know, and now I understand. So there's a lot of, you know, introspection, reflection happening, you know, depending, of course, what you discover. You know, maybe you find out, you know, you were, you know, a nasty imperator, you know, and like a, you know, yeah, like a leader, you know, and 10,000 people died because of your ego, mm. you know, which explains probably a lot of bad luck in that life, mm. you know, but you just come into grips with this, you know, um, oh God, you know, you're uh, responsible for killing at least 10,000 people, you know, mm. had babies and this and that, you know, that is something to digest. I love that because you sit, you do in your work, go to the root. And so it sounds like you're touching on the root patterns, the root energy mm -hmm. sources. So you mm -hmm. said the word that I was going to ask you because it came up in our, hey, you want to come on the show chat when you said, what is a leader? And this show is obviously geared towards leadership, transformation, healing, and and ascension in that regard. What do you, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I know you shared some preliminarily before, well, before the show, so to speak. What, what do you see in terms of the collective ascension and the shifts underway and leadership? Like what well, is a first of all, you know, yeah. you should question yourself first of all, why do you want to be a leader? You know, are, you, <laughs> are you an egomaniac? You know, maybe you're better supporting others, you know. Maybe you're a cancer, you know, and you're really good at supporting, you know. And I mean, look in the chart, you know, there's your Leo, you know, in which house and in which sign, you know, that will give you, you know, a, a reflection. So start I mean, with my, the energy makeup, or let's say your your cosmology, your inner cosmology. Yeah, look, okay, look where going. your Leo is. You know, my, okay. my Leo is in uh, Mercury. You know, I mean, mm. yeah, you know. So I like to be top <laughs> over here, top dog over here. You know, cutting edge in thinking. You know, think outside the box. Mm. You know, don't follow the the trodden path. You no, know, you find a lot more <laughs> on the other side where nobody ever looked. You know, where nobody ever cleaned up. You know, so that's that's my you know biggest bang for the buck. Mm. You know, but how can you maximize things? I don't know. I kind of going astray here. What was your question? No, on? you're not going astray because it sounds like for because I heard it through the first call we had when you said that you said you know why would you want to be a leader and it makes it echoes that uh, I think it was Jesus that said you know heavy he, heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? Leadership comes with a lot of responsibility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah. touched on the analogy you used. What if you were a leader in another life? Because on the show, many people in the three seasons have heard my leadership journey, and I was that. 
And I and I, so it's it's fascinating uh, to me our perspectives. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, okay, so yeah, talk to me, so, Goose. <laughs> yeah, so I I mean, so I'm doing past life regressions, you know, and it's not like you know I do one past life regression per session. No, 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 no. I'm doing like twenty, thirty, sometimes more past life regression. Potent dosages, interesting. Yeah, you know, group or just you know individuals, but I'm going through a lot of past lives with people. You, know, you do course, big construction like... jobs. Wolfgang doesn't mess around, audience. He only does big <laughs> construction <laughs> projects. No, I'm trying to be efficient. You know, I know and, I'm teasing you, know, you. Keep going. I love and, you. Keep and going. then you have tons of past life that got raped. You know, and are stuck to this. You know, so yeah, you don't have to want to go one on one on one. You know, it's just too much. You know, all together and then process the ones that are left. And, you know, have to have an individual talk. Uh, so God, <laughs> I got sidetracked. No, no. Me. So you were saying you do a lot of the past life regression because we were going back to this concept of leadership. So you started with, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Why okay. do you so, want to be a leader? And then we we're revisiting. Okay, yeah. what does it mean to be a leader? Okay. So that? I was establishing, you know, yeah. my fund of knowledge about this. You yeah. Know? So I go through most of that trauma. And I, I give you an example now. So I had this um, Asian lady, in you know, highly intelligent and spiritual. And so, and, and I had a session with her, and then later on over Skype, she told me that she also knows in the past lifetime she was a Chinese queen. Yeah? And I'm like, okay. So next thought popping into my mind was, oh yeah, they, they make a lot of enemies. <laughs> yeah. You know, whether you know they you know, I think the Chinese later, said the know. nail that sticks out the most gets hammered first, which is what yeah, I'm thinking what, what, of. Whatever she did to other <laughs> concubines or mm -hmm. you know, to other people she didn't like or servants, you know, you don't want to mm -hmm. know. So right. So, you know, and so, so I felt guided and uh, that I called those in on her behalf. You know, I called all those enemy ghosts in. And there were about three hundred. You know. And I just it didn't. So take this is three hundred souls. When you say ghosts, this is a soul that's passed. Ghost. Ghost. You know, we'll soul unpack is that way next. above that. You know, we'll it's, a person, that next. it's okay. a personality of that incarnation. Okay. Okay. You know, the personality it hasn't come into a higher awareness. You know, where it's oh, you know, I'm also this and this and this. You know, okay. So, so it's like it's stuck like in a way. The, yeah, they're, they're stuck. You know, okay. um, they're like humans without a body. <laughs> That can't eat. Is that what Dante? Do you think that's what Dante meant with the inferno and limbo? Would you say that's the limbo that a ghost is stuck in that limbo bardo state, so to speak? Um, Sorry, I know you're. Rough, we're, we're heading in leadership. Roughly, roughly compared. You know, um, consider like that. You know, let's say if you um, get strangulated. You know, so that's a very. You know, you get stuck in that loop many times. Anger, fear, you know, that survival thing, you know, this is okay. st stuck there. Mm -hmm. Like um, once, you know, in, in, in Germany, you know, I mean, I'm 70 years old. So, you know, there was this, I was a boy and we were waiting in a lawyer's waiting room and there was this guy that got stuck in a collapsing building, you know, for two days, you know, in the war. Wow. You know, and he sued for support. Wow. You know? Every five minutes, he told the same story again, and he apologized. He said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, um, this is all what's going on in his head. He was on a loop. So the trauma gets that soul, it sounds like, stuck, quantum-wise, looping that death energy yeah. in different I mean, forms. Not, not everybody loops. <laughs> You know? it's, it depends, right? It depends on the manner in which the death, do, you know? the density, the trauma. It's all these factors and variables yeah. energetically and quantum wise, let's say. Depends, yeah. yeah, it depends on what happened to you. You know, did you um, die as a warrior? Was it quick or not? You know, did you think it was an unfair fight? Do you want to get even? Are you looking for your loved ones? Here? So those all mean? stay in in the personality body, it sounds like, from what you're describing, brother. And it sounds like, oh, yeah. the, so then, because you said it with the strangulation example, and I know we're going to go back to the Chinese queen and the leadership trail of thought. So it sounds like, yeah, if I died by strangulation, then that loop of that, not only the death, all of those energies of vindictiveness and sorrow will keep looping in my emotional, mental, and cellular bodies. Yes, and um, there's a bleed over. Plus, those beings, you know, let's say um, if you in a past lifetime, you know, were a slaver that was really bad to his people, 
you know, you got cursed and you probably have, you know, a lot of them as ghosts and they're following you around and they're screwing up whatever they can. So this is why I was fascinated the, by this. So let's finish yeah. the Chinese lady and then we'll let's get back go to, to the Chinese lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So leadership I, and then we'll get to ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this was about leadership. Mm. And so... um so, you know, I cleared the 300 ghosts and then I let her know, hey, and just do you know, at two o'clock, you know, I cleared 300 ghosts of you. Mm. And she said, well, I was in the taxi when that happened <laughs> and I could feel it right away. Mm. You know, she became a Tibetan nun later on. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she said she was high level. Wow. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, as soon as this happened, she could feel it right away. And the uh, subtle, hostile attitude of the taxi driver turned into friendliness. So it affected the morphogenic field around her, as we know, entangled. Well, no, they made her, they made her driver mad at her. You know, they affected the, you know, driver. Well, once you, you cleared know, it up, that dissipated yeah. because that's hanging he around her field. Yeah, well, they were manipulating the people. Then she said, you know, she went into wow. the conference room to the conference. And suddenly, she said, instead of fighting me all the time, everybody referred to me in a queenly manner. You know, as if she is like, so what do you think about this? You know, before it's like, you know, this is fighting for the fighting's sake. You know? And so the whole attitude in the whole conference room has changed because the 300 ghosts were not manipulating her environment, you know, to be hostile to her. They were getting even with her, you know, through this. You know? So that's the idea of that. So it's it's really, I mean, I keep hearing it from you. Yeah, it's the non-physical or let's say these beings from the subtle dimensions and the impact it has very real because yeah, most up until I met you and we had to talk to, and you said ghosts and that's why I still, we're going to unpack it live as far as the audience is concerned. I still am eager to get into that, which we'll get into in a few moments. Yeah, because you hear about entities if you're an energy worker, right? If you hear about otherworldly beings and, and alien species and, and elementals, and then you said ghosts are the biggest problem, which we'll get to. So back to leadership real quick. So so, so how do you feel? So once the person feels like, okay, why do I want to be a leader? The inception, the source of where that's coming from, exploration. And then it sounds like from the example you're drawing, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Be careful because that comes with responsibilities. Yeah, uh, because it's, yeah talk that's to me. Yeah. All right. So what happens when you're successful? Well, lots of <laughs> a lot, a lot, lots of things, of jealousy. a lot of things. You get really, really <laughs> powerful. Let's say you amass things, and then yes, you get the nail that sticks out gets hammered first. People no, will no, no. Argue. People just are envious, you know, backstabbing, gossip, you know, um, human nature, jealousy, and, and you know, this is a back burden. You know, and suddenly energy that goes to your back, you know, and then. um well, and then we go into the woo-woo realm, you know, curses and black magic. I mean, thought forms is one thing, you know, just being pissed, that has an effect. But That's then like the evil like, eye. You mean thoughtful like the evil eye, giving somebody a bad thought? Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, of course, you know, when you go black magic, you know, then you become more professional. <laughs> <laughs> and you know make it bigger how would you define that bank. for a neophyte for a newbie in the audience how would you define black magic well, or sorcery well thought forms affect you you know thought forms have an effect okay you know, let's say when you step into a room you know you may feel suddenly depressed or happy you know these are the thought forms the vibe that's there you know so they affect you if you're sitting next to somebody you know that hates your guts you're going to start feeling pretty creepy after some time. Mm. You know, again, their thought forms, their negative thought forms and emotion have an effect on you. So, um, you know, beings use this as a weapon, you know, mm. and they use their own thought forms and they, of course, um, they try to amplify them through all kinds of methods. It's called correspondences, you know, if you know anything about magic or Rico or anything like that. Mm. And they also use dark entities, you know, as you have angels and beings of love and light, you know, there are also beings of destructions and they feed on dark energies. Mm. And that is their food. And, and it's um, part of creation, you know, it's mm. not that God made a mistake or, <laughs> mm. you know, that you don't have duality unless you have, a, you know, contrast. Two op to contrast, you know, that's this realm here, you know, if you don't like this, go higher, you know, heaven, you know, different 
<laughs> different game there. <laughs> yeah, the earth is a game of contrast, correct? For those that are new to that. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of yeah. why mm -hmm. you incarnate here in an advanced level. Yeah. Yeah. So um Okay, now we, we kind of I'm stuck again. Um <laughs> Hold on, I got you. Uh Yeah, that was a good one. This is what happens when you have the fool mentality. Hence why Wolfgang says smile like an idiot because we become antennas. Sometimes the ideas come and go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's kind of why, you know, even as a healer, you know, you need somebody that guides you. Mm. you know, when you want to heal on yourself. Uh, you know, as uh, so when I have, you know, a client, you know, I'm not completely immersed. I'm not completely channeling you know i have to you know keep track of time you know make sure we don't forget something we skip something right. you know i mean i write stuff down so i have right. to be kind of linear you know right. i'm kind of walking in both both worlds both worlds you know whereas then the one that's under you know yeah he's just in the spirit world you know that's eye closed relax you know they're you journeying know. as you said earlier they're, they're journeying you know so one is driving the other one is just perceiving you know that's how you yeah now i'm doing kind of both things you know i'm kind of lose track then <laughs> well i remember so we were talking about so then um the concept of black magic thought forms and this notion of how they use the thought forms in an unnatural or let's say in synthetic way, you know, spells, correspondences, using the same way we can call on a team. They have, you know, dark, dark teams, teams, let's say, mm -hmm. subcontractors that do demolition, <laughs> chaos magic, so yeah. to speak. M M Mercs. Yeah, mercenaries. Yeah, there you go. Wet ops. Oh, I like that. Wet ops, like you know, hitmen, so to speak. <laughs> okay, so 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 that's where we were on that uh train of thought in terms of we, I wanted to touch on what do you know or let's say what do you phrase black magic to be? And then before that, we were talking about leadership and this notion of how yeah. things can get directed at you if you're in the spotlight, so to speak. Right. So once you start having power, you know, um, there's definitely, you know, the more you get it, the more emphasis is put on to you, you know, to get this corrupted. Explain that. What do you mean? It, it almost, I, I hear it, it's almost like a game where they then want you on their side. Is that kind of what you mean? Yeah, you know, or make you useless. Make you useless. You know, just, um, you know, destroy your mission. To take players out of the game in a way. Well, I mean, you know, um, if you have like an alcohol addiction, you know, they make you, you know, drunk driving, have a car accident, you know, you're done, you know. Or um, I've seen a lot of gurus, you know, falling down through sex. You know, I mean, um, I've seen one guru had 4,000 followers just worshiping. You know? Next thing, um, you know, I hear, well, you know, lost everything. Um, was married to a fat woman with four kids. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, um, something, you know, didn't oh, go it's right. It's like an Icarus you know? effect. They crash, so to speak, is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, well, you know, that woman did obviously some magic. You know, to get well, it's interesting. Kind of attraction, you, you know, you, and it just destroyed the whole thing. You know, she probably got um, support from the dark side, you know, to you know, corrupt that operation, you know. What I'm hearing from you is it's interesting because all of the teachers I've had, it makes sense what you're saying more so now in hindsight. I can connect more dots listening to you because it. I, I, I was told, and this is kind of the theme was if you have a hook in you, then the let's say the dark side of the game can actually hook you. So the vices, it's interesting, right? These lower nine gates, as I call them, these vices are the entry point. So if you don't have the vices, you're transparent. Nothing can stick. Right. I mean, you, you don't have chinks in your armor. There's no penetration. There's no way to, you know, get you addicted, um, you know, to lure you with lust, so to speak, things like that. Is that would you agree, generally speaking, with the phraseology or how does that land for you? Yeah, that's the idea, you know, and um, of course, ascetism, you know, or renunciation is not necessarily the answer. You know, it's, of course, a, you know, a question of balance, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, you consider you can consider sugar a vice, you know, but you know, um, better is to replace it, you know, with something higher. I guess you that's know? what I'm learning more and more, even listening to you, is this notion of 
you know, as you become a leader, you look at the intention and then, yeah. And it seems like then you will have to, the responsibility is also to purify yourself so that you don't have all of these things impacting you, draining you, weighing you down or haunting you, so to speak, which we can, we're going to transition into in a way with the ghost and understanding. Well, as a leader, you know, if you start leading from ego, you know, you're going to make ego based decisions and that's not good. You know, you want to get rid of your enemies, you know, instead of placing them in positions where they're going to be happy and useful. You know, I mean, you don't see the proper reality, you know. So if you want to, you know, take the responsibility, you know, you have to be connected so to some kind of knowledge. You know, you don't want to just gamble around here. You know, maybe you start out with good intention and like with the genie, you know, you get your three wishes and it goes sideways <laughs> in a way you never wanted to. You know, so as this way, as a leader, you know, you have to be in, in connection, you know, with divine guidance, in my opinion. You know, so the old kings, you know, they always had their brahmanas or soothsayers, you know, and saints and warlocks around them, you know, to not only defend them, but also, you know, to give, you know, higher guidance. It's that inner alignment, the alignment with the soul, so to speak. Well, that's no, no, well, that's kind of more also looking outside, you know, but, mm. um, you know, <laughs> at least, you know, to some sources, you know, I mean, sometimes they would line up with an overshadowing deity like Athena for Athens. Mm. You know? And so there's different gods, you know, that were overshadowing, you know, different cities at those times. You know, yeah, this is my culture, this is my experiment. You know, no, this is my experiment in these different cities. They would get, you know, I mean, in this whole story with Troy, you know, this is what happened. You know, they, you know, they were the battle of the demigods in a way. Yeah, well, the, at least the humans were channeling those gods. You know, and the gods were overlaying. I mean, this is reality. You know, this is. Um, Absolutely reality, this kind of thing. <laughs> well, it's a higher dimensional understanding of this plane, what's playing out below what is upstairs, let's say, right? These mm -hmm. demigods, these higher dimensional beings that are not physical are then, yeah, playing out archetypally in the collective of, of, of the humans, let's say. Is that more or less a good interpretation yeah. of it? Yeah, you know, plus um, you're probably also entangled with these kind of beings. You know, imagine you're an eternal being. You have been around, you know, for thousands of years. You know, the multidimensional nature. Had relationship. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, nowadays we have 8 billion people on the planet, but the number was a lot smaller. So what I was saying is this notion of, so you, here you are talking about otherworldly beings, and we haven't touched upon the main topic today, this notion of ghosts and how these energies can hold us back as leaders, which we're starting to unpack. It sounds like, from what you do, it's your this notion of symbolism and keeping it organic. You don't mess around with the source. You literally say absolute. I think what the verbiage used is absolute God or absolute source. So, mm -hmm. can you real quick? Can we unpack this notion of lowercase gods and how these things are misunderstood? And then there's like an absolute, let's say, multiversal intelligence, because I think that's important for some of the audience, whether they're advanced or newbies. They may not understand any of this, or some of them may want refinement. Mm -hmm. And real quick, the analogy that came to mind for me was when I learned last year, you know, there's the Devi prayer, which is about the divine mother in the Vedic. And then there's like the Lalitha, which is another mother. And so then I was starting to think, well, wait, which is the mother or is it a higher version or dimensional essence of the mother, like a copy of the copy? So that's kind of wanted to plant that mm -hmm. seed. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, just last week. You know, this week I put out a video on false gods and false twin flames. You know, where I get into detail. You know, and it's channeled. You know, through one of my clients. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. We had a good session, and I just thought we got to share this. You know, and he's anonymous, but you know that's where we get dialed delve into this. So, the um, absolute source. Why mm. do I use this term? Mm. Um. So there are, you know, there's a lot of fighting, you know, and who is God, you know, I mean, between the different Abrahamic religions, even, you know, <laughs> one call it Jehovah, the other one Allah. You know? uh, and um, there's the human versions of it, yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, so, and, you know, and there are people that are saying, um, you know, these are not absolute source. You know, these are Anunnaki. Mm. 
mm. like false they, imposters they, along the way. Well, yeah, these are Enki and little, you know, from this kind of line, you know, um, Anu, um, this kind of line, you know, these are um, like local warlords, so to say, mm. you know, in other terms. Mm. And I know, I mean, there are many, you know, devout Muslims that think, you know, they are worshipping, you know, the absolute source. They're worshipping a black box. Saturn. And <laughs> I don't want to say anything about it's okay that. i was raised muslim so i'll speak for it's, yeah, yeah. i'm i'm one of the clubs so i can you know mm -hmm. find out why you go counterclockwise also uh, isn't it it's also it reverses the polarity right so you're actually um, down cycling research it yourself yes i don't want to make any judgments ah okay you didn't want me to say that you were doing rhetorical you're doing a lawyer question the socratic okay. method <laughs> right. so um yeah um so you know, I, I um, you know, so there is deception there from from dark side, you know, and so I sidestep this by just demanding, you know, absolute Straight to source. the absolute, the one absolute the origin, source, you know, the original the, copy, uh, not the the copies of the copies of the copies. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, um, you know, as high as we can go, you know, but not onto that Anunnaki level. That's definitely not, yeah, you know, and um, also with other beings. Um, sometimes, you know, if I want to be conservative and there's a lot of funky stuff going on, just call it on the own Christ high self. You know? Of course, you have to be on a certain vibrational level, you know, um, to make that happen. But that's also very, very safe. You know? Of course, I mean, my working relationship with those beings, they have been like for a long time now. So they have a good track record. You like know, a rapport, like almost. Like a rapport. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, that, that works, you know. I mean, it's like a carpenter, <laughs> you know, that shows up at work, his stuff doesn't fall apart, you know. After 10 years, you know. <laughs> you know, you know those are my reliable subcontractors. I'm going to call on archangels yeah. more regularly. Well, yeah, you know, you, you see, you know, how it works out for you. you know? I mean, Real quick, you know, on this notion of, of false, false deities, let's say, for instance, I'm going to ask it rhetorically. I'll, I'll Wolfgang it this way. Is it possible that light, you know, that they say the light, the white light God, is it possible that that light can be not God light? Oh, yeah. Can you elaborate? Well, I mean... What know, other sources is... could give us that kind of light that would make a human think, uh, oh, uh, this is God? Uh, uh, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, talk to me, Goose. All right. I mean, through the technology, you know, if you have computer technology now, computer technology taught us a lot about consciousness, you know, RAM and so on. You know? Now we also know virtual reality. You know? It's still funky, you know. And, and if you listen to, you know, some of those SSP people, you know, uh, they're saying, you know, they had been subjected to virtuality where you couldn't tell the difference. Mm. And, and that's like even for us maybe 10 years ahead maybe five years ahead mm. you know, i mean nowadays you get some stuff that's like pretty close mm. you know and so it's just a question of time you know mm. so but imagine for the grace for the dark or for the anunnaki this is like stone age technology so you're saying there's non-human higher advanced technologies you're alluding to okay yeah, you know, okay. and so um, they have, you know, created virtual reality spaces, you know, and where they can um, bring souls, you know, they think they're going into their heaven according to their belief system, you know, and those saints are there and everything, and they don't know better, you know, and they go to those and they're like in a loop there, you know, and mm. their energy is being harvested on the astral plane, on the astral plane, you know, it's not physically their body, you know, it's the, the soul, part of the soul energy is getting siphoned off, and it's kind of like Matrix style, but Matrix is shown in 3D physical reality, you know, but right. it's on the astral plane. So Other realm, different, different for physicality. There. So hold on, let's let's slow down. So then, so you're what you're describing energetically. So let me uh, say see if I'm following for the audience's sake is more more or less. So they, it's almost movies. like what's that? <laughs> for, this well, is not for newbies. <laughs> honestly, man, I will tell you, I, I considered myself masterful, and I learned what you're talking about, false ascension grids, and you know, for the neophytes, let's say, as well as some of the advanced people, because of where we're taking the audience as a whole. 
So what you're describing is almost like a simulation room, right? It's like they create a room and then you're thinking, oh, I've transcended, I've ascended to heaven. And it's really a, a almost like a siphoning system. It's really there. They're, these souls are not aware at a higher dimensional level that they're actually stuck in a synthetic loop, let's call it. it yeah. Is that accurate so far? I'm tracking. Okay. Yeah, false heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you know, so what's the difference? Mm -hmm. So when you really have a lot of love, you know, they cannot fake that. They cannot fake the love. Mm. Yeah. So that's a good test of, of is this a pure source or is this false deity or synthetic yeah, yeah. technology is, looping is this, me? Yeah, is this, love, is this just light and glitz? You know? Or, you know, do you feel love in your heart, you know, uplifted, smiling? You know, is it divine? You know, they, they cannot fake divine very well. You know? So even they try so many times with fakes, um, even entities, you know, when we call with a new one, you know, we call on the high self and they're coming in and, you know, and we send some and it's like, eh, I don't know. You know it, doesn't really, it doesn't feel like, you know, it's like. A, so is that like it, camouflage almost? Is that the analogy that they can come in yeah. and it feels like it's really a part of your higher self? It's not. Is that what Let's you're saying? Say, you know, homeless person walks into like a higher hotel. You okay. Know? Um, you know, there are probably some signs that you know, no, this you cannot afford this. <laughs> so it's almost like they don't belong. That's not you can tell this is not their I can, I can I can tell by the vibe. They don't fit know? in, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, it's doesn't no, you know, it's like this weird feeling. So you're describing and then, and then I have them, you know, my clients, you know, project source love onto them. You know, oh, shit. and that's like if if they're if they're not off the line, you know, that's like peeing on them, you know, so they squirm and it's like, you know, but if they're of the light, you know, they bring even more love back as an echo. And that's how you know. So let's you unpack know. this, because, I mean, the level of discernment and subtle almost granularity and attunement that you have as a practitioner, I would say most even advanced practitioners wouldn't, I mean, they'd have to strive for, right? It speaks to how long you've been doing this and cultivating this practice, because what I'm hearing from you is number one, you can tell the energy source from the essence of it. And number two, shine, like, it's almost like a litmus test, right? To double check if you have any, <laughs> if you have any like, okay, hmm, I don't know. You may be like, you, you then shine light or love, pure love essence. And then it's almost like the wicked witch is what I'm seeing in my head. <laughs> I'm melting. No. Okay. Interesting. So here you go, audience. You're, you got the man himself, this master telling you some really juicy nuggets already. Okay. So so we're touching on uh, ghosts and well, we haven't gone to ghosts fully. We've touched on leadership, the you know intentionality, what can happen if you you know the Chinese proverb I've said a couple of times. You stick out uh, a nail that sticks out gets hammered first. Let's touch on something before we get into the meat and potatoes and kind of this home stretch of ghosts and haunting and how to deal with that. And then the, let's say an exercise to play around with. You mentioned this when we first talked, mass mind and like collective traumas and this interplay. Can we unpack that a little bit because I feel like taking a step back we've talked about individual ghosts and then i really wanted to touch upon quickly how does this interplay the inter entanglement of our microcosm and the macrocosm of all of humanity you know talk to me about mass mind collective traumas before we get into the ghosts and what we do about ghosts mm -hmm. so as an anthropologist you know when you look at the world you know um, most anthropologists used to look at animals as bound by instinct okay you know they come onto the world and, you know, with a little learning from their parents, you know, they're, you know, they're pretty much ready to, you know, do the world. Of course, the more intelligent, you know, the longer the learning curve, you know, elephants, you know, take, you know, more than two years, about two years to, to get state and then they have a long learning curve. Okay. <laughs> you know, the dumber they are, you know, the ready out of the box, <laughs> you know, so that's instinct, you know. And now with humans, um, they don't have that much instinct. You know, there is definitely lots of instinct there. You know, look at Freud and, you know, nursing and so on, you know, in procreation. Um, but then, um, you know, a lot of it has to be learned by culture. You know, mm. what to eat, how to eat, how to dress, you know, how to mate and all this is all cultural. So instinct with humans has been replaced by culture. Mm. So then that's mass mind. You know, cult, you probably... sure, cult, 
Sure. Keep going. Mass mind. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm with yeah. You. you know, so what you have like localized mass minds. You know? I mean, well, you have like, uh, you know, your own thing. And then maybe you have your family unit. You know, they have maybe a tradition of tough love or whatever. That's a group consciousness that's carried over from one generation to another till somebody changes it. Well, then maybe even you're part of a tribe. You know, and maybe they fancy themselves or a guild, you know, as merchants, yeah, we're the slickest of them all, or tough warriors, you know, or gangsters, yeah, they're always going to get you. You know, I mean, they have like um, also, you know, a certain mass mind. So it's almost like sub layers of these cultural programs, is, as the way you're unpacking it. I mean, yeah. there could be a lot of things we're hooked into from what you're already unpacking. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, you have the country stuff, you know. Uh, let's look at Ireland and um, England. You know, I have a lot of clients from Ireland. And oh my God, you know, the magic, the sacrifices, you know, the hate, you know, that is from both sides, the curses, you know. I mean, it's just incredible, you know, in, in going through history. You know, so... Um, mm -hmm. you know, dark forces and light forces just battling each other. You know, all Atlantean stronghold, Ireland. You know, the Dracos. You know, coming through Britain to England, trying to wipe them out. You know, so this is. You're talking um, about intergenerational conflicts, essentially Palestine, Israel type of stuff. That is, Ireland, England. You know, this yeah. again, you know, um, two large, you know, different math minds wow. you know, battling each other out and. Of course, they are controlled, you know, by overshadowing deities, you know, gods, goddesses, Draco, you know, Anunnaki, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so they're using humanity again as proxy, you know. Would you so call they're... that program? So then how would you define, mm, so the mass mind, the way I see it, as you just described it, what pops into my head as far as visual is it's almost like a little like box, let's say, right? It's like a little program and then we're all hooking to it and then there could be layers of all these cultures and, and boxes. See them as clouds. Clouds, okay, clouds. Clouds that can overlay, you know. Okay. I mean, let's say if you were living along the Silk Road, you know, you got ex ex exposed to a lot of different cultures. So the Jews, a lot of clouds were, overlaid. Okay, interesting. I like the, way the, you did that. The, the Jewish, they were very highly educated and they had access, you know, to a lot of teachings, you know, from the Orient, from India, you know, from Egypt, you know, from the Greek, from the Romans, you know. So they were right on the trade routes, you know, through the coast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, yeah, you got to look at information flow like that. But so then, this is like all group yeah. mind, you know, and then we have a mind of humanity as such, you know, just mm -hmm. humanity as such, you know, forget all about the races, forget about Africa, yellow and blue. I mean, they also have their group mind, you know, like, I mean, all the one of the saying is like the Asians, you know, there are a lot of people under one rule, mm -hmm. you know, one on top and then you know, Chinggis Khan, you know, Chinese nowadays, you know. A Mao, you know, one on top and lots of, you know, ant people, so to say. So what, you, you know, have to, what, of... disconnect from these clouds or these, how how do you go about it or how would you recommend? Because that, because yeah. I, I, I actually, as a practitioner, don't know how I've done that. I know I've done it. So it's interesting. I'm curious what your method would be or the precision and how you would do it. Well, you know, all right. Well, I mean, what are you looking at yourself? You know, do you see yourself as a Chinese or as Iranian? You know, or do I look myself as a German? I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean, I have some advantages of being a German, but but defining myself as a German is quite a limitation. You know, mm -hmm. even as a human, uh, I don't consider myself necessarily essential human. Mm. You know, I'm here on a mission, you know. Every time I come down from, you know, really high consciousness, you know, um, like, you know, Ayahuasca or something like this, you know, I'm like, oh, God, back to advanced monkey bodies again, you know, it's like, here you go, you know, grind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Um, so you've self-defined as opposed to, it sounds like to you, psychology speak, as opposed to developing an identity, which I always see as an attachment to a thing, you self-defined. You're almost like, it's like you, you unhooked, for lack of a better description, from these group mind yeah. cultures. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you want to step outside the box, you know? I mean, when you just look inside the box, you know, you're limited, you know? And, um, you know, I've seen, I mean, through my work, you know, I see humanity and reality through so many different lenses, you know? I mean, when you, once you go above, um, let's say, biology, you know, consciousness is very, very different, very neutral, no survival, and all this, you know? And especially the celestial realms, you know, the amount of love, and the vibes there, you know, it's just beautiful. Mm. 
and um, you know, the more you understand, you know, and can connect. I mean, you know, once you connect with love in this Milky Way galaxy, you know, that's a <laughs> beautiful thing. Or just with whales, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, you realize you're just a, an awareness that can move around, you know, more or less, you know. And, I mean, right now I inhabit this body, you know, but in dream time, um, you know, cruising somewhere else, you know, and even doing meditations, you know, I can travel and we can travel in time, you know, we go back, change things, you know, Quantum rectify looping. things, apologize, you know, and um, bring I love that. And, and I'm an awareness that moves around, bro. Woo. That's a new one that just came through. <laughs> yeah, I never was a mic drop. Long. We should have ended it right there. All right, everybody, <laughs> see you later. How, we're mic dropping on that one. <laughs> wow, I love that. Okay, so let's get let's get to this like home stretch of this notion of okay, ghosts, right? We've touched on it in terms of broaching it with this client that was a queen. What, and you've started to unpack it to refresh and, and actually give it in a more cogent way. What is the impact, the energetics of the ghost? Because you did say, Haas, I feel inspired to talk about this. And I said, Wow, that really I, I personally have felt haunted as a leader. I'm learning, you know, ghosts. Wow, that's a thing. And you said, Haas, this is a thing that's been ignored. You know, we're all cleaning up on aisle everything else, and we haven't cleaned up on aisle ghost as a collective. So talk to me about that. What are the energetics? You know, what do you let's riff on that? Mm -hmm. Haunting and ghosts as a leader. So um, I mean, you know, we all know that um, you know, on those battlefields, you know, they're no good energies, you know. They are haunted houses, etc. You know? And in a lot of my work, you know, people have properties and, you, you know, you know, they're dragging their butt, you know, and their dark portals there. And then you look, well, you know, there was war, there was murder, somebody died of cancer, you know, there were dark sacrifices, you know, all kinds of things happen, you know, dark. Mm -hmm. And so then these beings, you know, they're stuck and they have to feed off, you know, humans or trees or something, you know, and mm -hmm. they lead their misery still. You know, it's on the astral plane. Time is different. You know, they don't decay like a tree, you know, decays. Mm -hmm. when it's mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are also these energies there, you know, basically are yeah, depressed or dark energies and, you know, and that affects everybody. They get depressed, they get suicidal, they get sick people, you know, their dark chi, their good chi gets sucked away and, you know, and they get manipulated by darker beings. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the and, and of course, you know, these are many times, you know, humans that are, you know, good humans, you know, that got stuck for some reason, you know, murder, you know, trauma, accident, you know, for some reason they're still there and they suffer. Mm -hmm. And so mm. just bring them, bring in them, you know, and have angels and other beings, you know, to bring them into higher consciousness and into the heavens is a good service to them. You know, it's just, kindness plus you know you get rid of a lot of um you know like stray people that affect you you know i mean if you have another family on um you know on, on the saddle plane you know living in your house and charging you um you know that's um, you know can be quite painful mm. you know? um could it be possible that it's a past version of you could be your own ghost Oh yeah, you know. I mean, that's I, much of my work is just liberating old ghosts. You know, I mean, what do you think? How many times have you been lynched? How many times have you been backstabbed and assassinated, poisoned, betrayed? Especially if you're a leader, which we've touched upon. Yeah. Yeah, but even you have you no know, power, you get pimped out. You know, mm. you get wasted for nothing. You know, you go over the wall <laughs> first. Mm. You know, as a soldier. You know, I mean, there's trauma and drama on every level. You know? So it hangs around, essentially. It goes back to that notion of these energies don't go anywhere, and we got to do something with them. Yes. So is the energetics like they're literally, because you said they need food, so is it almost like a, a parasitic effect then, too, oh, as a oh, technical? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even a well-meaning grandmother, you know, um, she likes to guide and protect you. First of all, she's old-fashioned, you know, because she's still in that human consciousness. Second, she needs life force, you know, just like an old lady that's this... You know, sick and you know, sitting and sitting next to you, and you get exhausted. You know, so they need life force, and you are a battery for them. You know, so the more ghosts you have, you know, the more the less life force you have. So, you know? in your work, like, is this is similar to the other stuff? Generally speaking, is it that they have to consciously then 
like almost is it like a hono pono like they have to forgive or generally speaking what are we dealing with in terms yeah, of the yeah, mechanics yeah i use that a lot you know I mean, it really depends what the issue is okay know? sometimes black magic trap you know sometimes revenge you know sometimes um you know love attachment you know so sometimes wants to play protector you know let's say if somebody wants to play the protector you know we thank them and then we call on the other heavenly protectors in and show yourself to them you know and show also how you much better can protect from the heavens in you know and uh so i talk them into it you know and they can always come back we give them permission to can come back and they're always glad you know from sissy it's almost like you're doing rehabilitation therapy to pull to the ghost <laughs> in a way a lot, a, lot, a lot faster a lot faster <laughs> <laughs> and the astral time is different you know so you yeah. just ask for it's it time compression like five seconds it's done you know yeah so well, it's interesting because it sounds like in a way you're you're you said something well let me one quick thing so you said that i believe if i heard you correctly let me ask you and see if this lands because you said that if that person is taking energy because they feel they're being the protector, right? Because that ghost is trapped in no, that contract. They have to. They have to. They need, you know. They need um, the food. They need the food. You know, there's a subtle body without a human body. Your human body is a battery. Mm. I mean, every muscle is like a little battery. The bioelectromagnetics, you know, yeah. Yeah, the fascia is the insulator, you know. The uh, muscle itself is the, the salt water. You know, so. mm. So it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like in a way you're also replacing, right? I Because I, a lot of times I've had to learn this and it's I see it all over the place. Like people will clear and then they don't fill, right? Because the old energy can easily come back. Is It sounds like that's what you're doing in part two or no? Did I did I misinterpret that? Well, um, so, yeah, first of all, you know, all the baggage and stuff gets cleared and this goes pretty fast, you know? And then at the end of my sessions... You know, I always do a soul retrieval. Elaborate yeah. for everybody's sake. What do you mean by soul retrieval? All right. So let's say, um, you know, you have been pimped out in one lifetime. Okay. Wolfgang's terminology, pimped out as in sold yourself or you've been marketed somehow. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, prostitution. Mm -hmm. And there's always some drama behind you. You know, people don't necessarily volunteer for that. Mm -hmm. And so there is this you know, higher goddess aspect in you, you know, and maybe you had a female incarnation that's like, oh, I'm not putting up with that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm out of here, mm -hmm. you know, and then a more cruder form that's all right, you know, and, and do it, you know, of your soul is there. So the higher more aristocratic aspect is out, you know. And mm -hmm. so uh, this has to be, you know, once this aspect, this core or whatever has been liberated. You know, um, this higher aspect can be asked in. Of course, you know, it has to be purified. You know, the body has to be purified of those emotions, you know. Otherwise, no, I'm not going to go into this body. You know, you're suicidal, you know. You have depression up to here. You know, I'm a goddess. No, you know. <laughs> and, you know, like you wouldn't go into somebody's underwear that has been worn for a month. Mm -hmm. you know? Same thing, you know. And so, uh, but the more you purify, the more aspects of you, you know, of your soul, which is like, divine and quite unlimited you know can manifest through your can come into you you know so the more you do this you know the more the power of the more presence of your soul can come into you you know so then later on you can walk with your high self you know male female if necessary and you know maybe only for a short time as a shaman you know it's the same you know all the time <laughs> if you're straight so in a weird you know. way it's like most of us then is that that relates to disassociation and being out of your body and not really being you're like a zombie almost state that many refer to if you have mm -hmm. severe soul disassociation fragmentation would you how, how does that land for you that it's almost like is that what you feel let me, let me no, put this coach uh, dissociation is kind of more than just subtle bodies out of your physical body okay so what mm -hmm. do you so what's the distinction between the subtle body leaving and the soul having to be retrieved how would you distinguish those as a practitioner so um see yourself um, as a tree okay an upside down tree okay so you're a leaf on that tree okay and um you know there's um you know this there is this branch you know so that's you and your past incarnations 
and then this branch attaches to a larger brand. You know, this is you know a more powerful Individual. aspect of your soul, okay. like an Anunnaki or you know some kind of a good bloodline. Okay, okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's a much wider powerful consciousness five six dimensional you know and then there is another aspect that's more like archangel like you know okay and higher than that you know a big bigger branch you know and if you would go all the way you know up you know you get to the trunk you know and that trunk would be source kind of you know and from source of course you know spreads out into all these different sub personalities sub realities and whatever into ignorance you know and the higher back to the trunk you go yeah you know i'm part of source more and more you know you're part of the whole again mm -hmm. the higher so essence you can, you can yeah you can travel up and down that tree backwards and forwards you know at least in the shamanic journey or in a good past life regression and a good you know soul retrieval whatever you want to call it so it's bringing in more of, let's say, the higher trunk in, let's say, as opposed to the lower branches. So a more yeah. pure or higher dimensional aspect coming back as opposed mm -hmm. to these distorted, let's say, unnatural or impacted aspects that then come in that are diseased or desensitized or a ghost or things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, you know, and basically I show you how to feed properly as a human energy being, you know. So you need an energy from the earth goddess. Okay. They need that energy for your cells, you know, for your physical body. But you need also a component, you know, from the higher astral plane, from the finer, you know. Um, and um, that mix, you know, um, it's like an angel in a monkey body, you know. You need mm. both those components. You know, and so uh, when you have only the angelic force, you're going to be a space case, you know, that has a hard time paying rent and keeping a job, mm. you know. And if you only have earth energy, you know, you may have a secretary and five cars, and, you know, big apartment, but you don't appreciate the finest. No heart and soul in your leadership. <laughs> yeah, you know? So, um, you know, you want to walk in both worlds, you know, like a tree. If it doesn't have proper roots, you know, it's going to get necked over if it has a big crown. You know? And, so and it also has to reach balance. up to get pure sunlight. So it's a dual effect as, as yeah. is up, so is below. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you need uh, that solid earth energy, you know, to run your brain and your energy system on a high, you know. I mean, if you want to run on high chi, you know, um, you better learn this. You know, it's life force. It's life force. You know, you have more life force. You have stronger orgasms. You know, you have, you know, everything is better in life, more intense and better. Yeah, in a lot of ways, that's kind of how I keep saying it to people is we have these gateways, you know, you have a grid above, grid below, and we're unplugged from the actual power grids and these power energy systems that are natural, that have existed since time immemorial, that are multiversal, multidimensional. And that, yeah, we're, I loved how you put it because it's, you're not connected. The battery starts to wane and the wick really deteriorates in an unnatural way, which is probably why, you know, guru, let's say gurus, masters, whatever you want to call, you know, somebody of your stature. Yeah. You, in a way you look young, you know, you're, you're my father at 70 looked way more deteriorated because he's not connected to these life forces, to these natural grids. He hasn't cleared out these interferences that we're touching upon today. So I, I love how you, how you put that in, how you brought that in. Where do you want to take us in terms of all, mate, we're, what do you feel in terms of a demo? What, like we've done a lot of yeah. tips and tools through yeah, here. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. You want to maybe drop this. some Wolfgang fire on them? Well, you know, this is something I do with all of my clients. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, this is about testing your heart chakra, you know, okay. yours and your people's heart chakra. Okay. And so demo time. Yeah, so I show this to all of my clients, you know, in the first session. Um, first of all, um, you know, um, just close your eyes and, and smile. And later on, you will understand why to smile. And just focus on pulling in the love from the earth goddess, you know, through your feet and root chakra into your heart, as if you're having straws, you know, or pipes. Mm -hmm. Just imagine pulling earth love up. And then send your love with a smile through the breath. Down. Go back and forth. Like an ocean.
Mm -hmm. Now put your tongue to the palate. Mm -hmm. And imagine you're pulling in the love from Milky Way Galaxy from about two meters above your head into your heart. And send that love up. She's the mother of millions of solar systems. Super smart. And we asked our angels and spirit guides of love and light to clear any resistances between us, Mother Earth, you know, and the Mother Milky Way galaxy. So there's love information flowing. Any spells, curses, blocks, entities, and um, parasites find our removal clear. Also, any dark um, curses, spells, and thorn of crowns, reverse crowns, any dark technologies, mm -hmm. please clear now. You know, divine source. Um, 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 keep on plugging away. Mm -hmm. And it takes about five seconds and it starts to kick in now. You probably feel this now. You get more space around the head. Good. Ah, now it's really coming in. Mm -hmm. Deep breathing. Good. Now it's flowing. Mm -hmm. And now start pulling the love from both sides, both ends into your heart. From the heavens and the earth. And just fill your heart with more and more of this divine love. The more you smile, the sweeter your smile. You know, the sweeter the love, the deeper you breathe, the stronger the love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe now, just um, keep smiling, but be rather passive. I'm going to project, you know, love from heaven and earth unto you, you know, unto you, um, Haas, and unto our viewers too. So just smile like an idiot and see what you feel. Now, when I snap my fingers, start frowning. This means mouth corners come down and observe what happens to my love. Start frowning now. Hmm. And smile again. And frown again and smile. Mm -hmm. So, probably for many of you, when you were frowning, you did not receive any love. You can open your eyes now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when you smile, you tune into the higher mind. You know, your mind becomes like a butterfly, go for the nectar, beauty, flowers. The more you frown, the more your mind becomes like a fly, garbage, poop, and so on. Same reality. Mm -hmm. So when you smile and I send love, you know, same vibration, you get it. When you frown and I send love, Locked. you're not going to get it. Discordant. When you frown and I yell at you, oh yeah, that just, <laughs> you get some blisters from that. You know, it's going to go right mm. in. But when you laugh and smile, <laughs> It's not going to get into you, you know? So really important, you know, when you deal with higher beings, you, know, you better smile. You know, you probably smile for your boss, you know, and who is your boss compared to Mother Earth, compared to Milky Way Galaxy, compared to Source and any divine being, you know, then nothing compared to those. You know? and we don't want to bounce on bosses here, but you I, know, see, I the, love, see the proportion. You know? I love the simplicity because, again, I mean, it, so much of the world nowadays is chasing complexity and, you know, breath work and you got to do all this fancy stuff. Let's call it, I'll call it fancy. And right there, I mean, all you did, you know, I call it all you did, you know, there's a lot in that all you did, you know, it's grid above, breathe it in, grid below, breathe it in, mix it, keep your heart open, smile, 
And right there, I mean, I felt a tremendous amount of release and relief. And it's, it's like you, yeah, like you said, I say we get high on our own vibes, you know, we can get high on our own vibrations. Well, this is America, you know, in America, you simplify and mass produce. You know? So I applied this, I'm German, you know, the and MVP perfect. minimum viable product, mm -hmm. scale yeah. it, baby, scale it. The Germans in me are perfected, you know, the American aspect, you know, yeah, mass produced, you know, simplified. Let's get this going here. Yeah, yeah. You took Henry Ford's assembly line and you put it up into the ascension realms. So you're you're creating an ascension yeah, I mean, assembly. You get a contact high from my videos, you know. I mean, what a technology, you know, it's awesome. You know, if you have the vibe, you know, do it, you know, and everybody else can get it. And that's awesome. You know, I mean, take advantage. It's like a prayer mill. It's like a Tibetan prayer mill. You know, it works. Yeah, it works. You know, take advantage of it. You know, so Wolfgang, high vibration. Yeah. Right. To wrap up, for anybody in the audience that's sitting, listening, that hasn't started, let's call it the more advanced soul healing inner work, soul searching inner work, which is basically what we've covered this episode. What would you say? Outside of our, what you've already covered, what feels inspired to say, what would be the starting point for them? If they had to pick and choose all of this, I know we can do it all at once or some of the mm -hmm. sessions are potent. Where would you say if they're a complete beginner or they're new to any of this, what's a starting point that you would recommend for them? Well, I would say, um, you know, go to my channel, just type in Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang. On and it'll be below too in the comments or in the description right. section of the video too, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're also going to have a link to... to um, you know, my whole list, you know. So you know, I have about, what's this, 250, 300 videos out now. Mm -hmm. And just follow your heart, you know, um, of what inspires you. you know? I mean, important is grounding, love, and sky connection, you know, start there. And just, you know, follow along, you know, smile, you know, the more you breathe, you know, the better the results. And take it from there. You know, if you have, um, you know, results from this, you know, if you start tingling and smiling and, you know, you feel lighter, you know, um, you know, you're on the path. There are people that are waking up, you know, fast, fast. You know? They are like a nurse supervisor, you know, one day and then, you know, and half a year later, you know, they start clearing out ghosts from the hospital. Mm. You know, they can see the energies. You know, of course, you know, um, they need somebody, you know, to explain stuff to them. You know, I mean, the videos, they're free and they're helpful. And they give you a lot of people, you know, guidance. And, you know, even, um, you know, if you haven't run all night long, you know, it's very soothing and calming. Some people, you know, that's the only thing that makes them fall asleep. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's helpful. And, um, you know, you can always try a session with me. I, my, my prices are very, you know, reasonable. And um, generally, wherever you are at, you know, um, most of the time I can, you know, if you have experiences with my guided meditation, I can up you, you know, I can help you, you know, get better. And, and you know, and once your heart has been opened, uh, you probably have a different relationship with my videos too. You know, you know what to expect. You know what the standard is. You know, I mean, I'm training you. You know, I feel your chakra. Ah, and you push more, and, you know, and, <laughs> and this and that, you know. So you know what is, you know, proper, you know, and you're going to have, you know, good results. I love that. Mm -hmm. And thank you. I mean, not only for being here and playing and co-creating together, also for the service that you've been doing. I mean, like you referred to the tools you're putting out there, gifting it in service to humanity. And and truly, you alluded to it throughout the episode and, and said it right now. People are waking up because this is a remarkable age of high potency and uh, opportunities to unlock things that really is, a, let's say, the time we've all been waiting for in a way as a collective um, so thank you. Thank you, brother. It really has been fun to play. Hopefully not the first, uh, the last, let's say, the first and m many more. And yeah, check out Wolfgang, his work, the comments, uh, the description section will have all the details, links and things of that nature below. Don't go too far below. Stay in the higher planes. Only go into the comments, to the description section. Any parting words, final words, inspired words that are coming through your form for the audience for now? Well, um, you know, give us a thumbs up, you know, subscribe and give comments, you know, share, you know, share your reactions. You know, um, it's important, you know, this is a community, you know, of light workers. 
and you know I read you know all the messages and if it's intelligent questions I answer them <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and smile you know and breathe you know breathe love into your heart mm. you know that's the most important you know and be in the smiley side you know be into the higher mind mm. most, most important easiest put smiley pictures everywhere you know and it actually kicks in your thymus, thymus gland thymus thyroid mm -hmm. your immune system kicks in when you smile when you frown it shuts off mm. you research it yourself or as wolfgang says smile like an idiot like nobody's watching carefree and uh, it'll work yeah. it'll work baby if you work yeah. it <laughs> you know, why like an idiot you know because uh, there's no reason it's just nice you know, you're not trying to be smart impress anybody no it's just uh it's nice you know in front of god and the higher beings you're just like bumbling idiot you know like you do look down as a human and you know, at the mouse you know and you just you run circles intellectual. You know, <laughs> you know, what, what does a now mouse and now stock market paying rent and all this stuff? You know, no idea. Mm. You know, so to you, a mouse is like a bumbling idiot. <laughs> to other beings, you know, we are bumbling idiots. Mm. And so, you know, just connect on the love connection and, you know, and take it from there. I love it. I call it sacred, not serious work. And it's had the full mentality of the tarot of, of really empty mind, you know, beginner's mind. And yeah, don't take ourselves too seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, season four is underway of Vulnerable Power Show. This has been Wolfgang. This is Tools for Ascension, a man who has committed to a mission to support the collective in getting rid of their ghosts and, and really accessing and unlocking the soul and leadership that they're here to bring forward the heart, the love, you know, truth, all of that. So Wolfgang, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Much love and blessings. Like he said, like share, support the mission. It's a collective mission. We're all in this together. We're all rising together and we'll see you again soon on the Volvo power show. Welcome to season four of the Vulnerable Power Show, a deep dive into the heart and soul of leadership, where we spotlight visionary leaders, spiritual entrepreneurs, innovative executives, and new earth pioneers who have all done the inner work and soul searching to transform and step into their greater calling and mission, here to make a big impact for collective good. We will share and explore vulnerable insights and potent wisdom in our heart-centered dialogues so you too can be equipped for the future paradigm unfolding today. Be empowered with the skills, tools, and practices so you too can do the transformative work and be the ascending leader you came here to be. Together, let's bring more heart and soul back to leadership around the world.